This is an interesting echo. Hello tech friends, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Craig. I love playing with new tech and seeing what it can do for us. If that sounds like something you're into, stick around. This is week 48 of my 2019 Echo series. This is the Echo Flex. It is an Echo that sounds horrible, but it's still the most interesting Echo device I've seen. You may be asking if it sounds horrible, what does it do? Why would you buy it? What is so interesting about this device? I'll answer all those questions, but first, here's a quick overview of what it does. The Echo Flex is a new release from Amazon. The release price is $24.99 US for just the Flex, with accessories at $14.99 each. It does all the things you'd expect from an Echo. You can make requests, get weather, set alarms, set timers, and so much more. You can use it to drop in on other Echoes in the house to talk to someone in another room or make outgoing calls on it. You can listen to music, podcasts, and audiobooks. You can also control your smart home. That is where it gets interesting. And I'll get into that in a couple of minutes. It basically does all you've come to expect from it has a 3.5 millimeter out to connect to external speakers. You can also use Bluetooth to connect to speakers. A thing I really like about the Echo Flex is that it can plug directly into the wall. So there's no need for a power supply and no need for third party wall mounts to get your Echo out of the way. So I said this thing sounds horrible. So I wanna do a little sound comparison next to the smallest Echo in the lineup, the Echo Dot third generation. So let's try a little sound comparison. This is at 80% right now. Play classical music. Playing classical music from Apple Music. Oh, that, that's bad. <laughs> let's just for a little comparison. Play classical music. Playing classical music from Apple Music. Definitely much better. One more time for some horrible music. Play classical music. Playing classical music from Apple Music. So you're not gonna buy this thing to listen to sound out of it. But Amazon's come up with a solution to help audio with this by adding the function to play audio on another device. If you go into the Flex settings, you can select another Echo or Bluetooth speaker to play audio on. You select another Echo by going to a group or letting Amazon decide what speaker to play the audio on. If you choose a group yourself, you would select your preferred speaker. So I selected my Echo back there on my desk. So if I go and make a request, Alexa. play classical music. Playing classical music from Apple Music. Alexa, stop. See, I said to stop and this one responded, lights start flashing. So you'll never get stuck with crappy sound out of this if you don't want to. Where I think things really start to get interesting with the Echo Flex is the USB on the bottom. This is for a few things. First, it's as simple as using the charging cord for your phone or other devices such as earbuds. Plug it in. Plug it into your phone, you're good to go. It is not rated to charge iPads and other tablets. I wish all Echoes had a USB to charge things with. It'd be nice if I could plug in a USB onto the back of this Echo Dot and just have a cord there. It's one less brick that you need to have eating up a plug. If you're already gonna have an Echo there plugged in, why not have it charge something? It streamlines your setup, and I love that. The real interesting use that opens up all kinds of possibilities are the USB accessories that I was playing with in the beginning. You have the night light and the motion sensor. Like I said before, each of these accessories are $14.99. Let's first talk about the nightlight. You may be asking, why would I add a nightlight to my Echo? Well, this is not an ordinary nightlight. When you plug it into the Echo Flex, it sees it as a smart bulb. I found second light, and you can control it by saying, 
Turn off second light. Since it's considered a smart bulb, you can ask for it to turn on and off as needed. Turn on second light. Turns on. Turn second light to 50%. It's nice, it's dimmable. Also, you can go into the app and you can rename it anything you want. Another great thing about this being a smart bulb is you can program it into routine so that it comes on at a preset time or you can trigger it with your voice. You can set the dimmer level and it's also an RGB bulb. That was a surprise to me when I started to use it. Turn second light to blue. Turn second light to red. So there it is changing colors. I hadn't read all the specs on this. I just ordered it. So I was kind of surprised that it was RGB. But I can see all different uses for this light. Maybe you want a night light in the bathroom that turns on automatically after sunset in a blue at 50%. That way you get a glow that's not too bright to wake your significant other or isn't blinding when you wake up in the middle of the night. So a routine I made for that is a little three-step thing that brings it on, turns its color to blue, and turns it to 50%. If I hit play, and now it quickly did all of that. So at sunset it could do that, you could do another routine at sunrise, it turns it off, you never have to think about it, you got your light there, and you have an echo in the room. This could be used in so many places in different ways. Like if you have a ring doorbell, you can use the motion sensor on the ring doorbell to trigger a routine as you pull into the driveway that turns on the night light in the hall so you have some light when you're walking in. Or it could just be a fun night light for kids and gives them an echo if they have questions. It really is up to you and your imagination and personal use. I find that very cool. Next we have the motion sensor. This is the one that excites me the most and the feature I find most interesting. There are so many ways this can be used with routines. I'm not gonna get into writing routines in this video. I have made routine videos that you can check out in the description, but let me know if you'd like to see an updated routines video. So when you plug it in, it's gonna discover it as a new device. It's just gonna give it a name as first motion sensor if you don't have any other ones. I found first motion sensor. To set up a routine triggered by first motion sensor, Go to the device detail page in the Alexa app. So they make it nice and easy so you can set it up. Here's a routine that I wrote. When it detects motion from the sensor, it is going to take my lights to blue video scene. It will then say, welcome home. It'll read my next event on my calendar, and then it'll finish up playing classical music from Apple Music. And all that's going to come from my full size echo. So here it is in action. Detects motion. Welcome home. It changed my lights. Your next event is Madison Cheer today at 5 p.m. That's going to start some music. There we go. I like that, that you could trigger a series of steps and start your day. You could make something so that you walk downstairs and it turns on the coffee machine, turns on some lights, gives you an update of what's happening during your day. I mean, there's all these different steps you can add. Or this could be used as something as simple as turning on lights when you walk into the kitchen and 30 minutes later, it turns them off. You can even limit the routine to running to a certain time of day so it's not always going off. There is also the option that you could set it up so that if it stops detecting motion, it triggers a routine. There really are so many options with this. You can automate your home in so many different ways using motion sensors. So not everything has to be scheduled or uh, with your voice. Until now, most popular motion sensors required a hub for the sensor to be paired with in order to do the same thing. Even then, some of them wouldn't be recognized unless it was paired with an Echo Plus or other Echoes with the built-in hub. From a smart home perspective, this is really the most interesting Echo that Amazon has come up with. I like devices that add more value. This goes beyond your typical Echo and really opens up so much more in the smart home space. And that's a space I find really interesting and really part of the future. What are your thoughts on the Echo Flex? How would you use it? 
let us know in the comments section. Make sure to check out this video over here so you can learn how to connect your Echoes to a Fire TV 4K or Fire TV Cube. If you like this video, you know what to do. Subscribe, come on back, and click that bell so YouTube will tell you about the next video. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.